Well, I've been working on the little magnetic loop build here behind me. You can see the little guy. I made a couple of changes, well, three, uh, but two big improvements in uh, performance and adjustability of the loop. First off, you can kind of see it there, but I'll show you a close-up here. I brought the two SO239 connectors in closer to each other. So this effectively, there was a gap at the bottom of the loop. This effectively closed that loop up quite a bit. And in doing so, um, it became much easier to get the SWR much lower. It really made an improvement. Before with the, uh, the loop with that gap, I had about a gap of like about that. I mean, well, maybe it's more like that. It was on either side of the capacitor where I brought the uh, ends of the loop in, which is a pretty common method. Um, if you look at magnetic loop builds, you'll see that the loop comes down to either side of the capacitor box, and you end up with that big gap in there. Uh, so I thought, let's bring those two closer together and let's close that loop up. And it made a difference. Um, before the SWR, I could get it down to, to below 1.5 to 1, maybe 1.3 to 1, um, pretty regularly, but it was difficult to get much lower than that. And when I closed up the loop, uh, wow, I can, I can get it right down to almost 1 to 1 now. Um, it, it made a big difference. The other thing I changed is the coupling loop. Uh, I made this form and this clamp to go on the pipe. So with my new uh, former for the loop, I got this clamp on here and this plastic form for the loop, and I can do things like I can shift it up and down, and I can rotate it within the plane of the main loop to assist in tuning. Now that makes uh, that that adds a whole nother degree of uh, tuning and adjustability to the magnetic loop, and uh, I have found that. There's no one size fits all for, for this. There's no one position that works best on every frequency that the loop covers. Even within bands themselves, I have found that on 20 meters, for example, down near the CW portion of the band, I got the best match and a nearly one-to-one -one SWR when I rotated the loop slightly out of plane of the main loop and had a gap of about an inch um, below the main loop. But up in the single sideband portion, it didn't match well like that, and I had to rotate it back within the plane of the loop and then move it up closer to the main loop. Uh, so just moving in frequency, I found that, that I get the best match. It's not always in the same place. It's not always at the same distance or in the same rotation. Uh, so that's been that's been kind of eye-opening you know most loops you build them you have your coupling loop you decide where you want it and you leave it there um, I think making it adjustable like this is a really good idea because then you can fine-tune even further you know if you're gonna be sitting on a frequency and operating for a while like you're doing a, a POTA activation um, or you're gonna be doing FT8 um, or something you know where you're gonna be sitting on one frequency having that ability to, to further fine-tune that loop down and get it just right down there, almost one-to-one -one SWR, um, that better match is going to result in an increase in efficiency of the antenna, and, and you're going to get out better, and you're going to hear better. Um, it's a small difference, but, you know, especially with QRP loops, and when you're working with QRP or low power, every little bit counts. And, and you know, you want to you wanna get those, those extra few little small units of whatever measurement out of it. Um, so that makes a difference. Uh, I'll put these uh, files up on Thingiverse. There'll be a link in the description below for that form and the clamp. Now that clamp is designed for um, three-quarter inch U.S. pipe, uh, PVC pipe. If I, well, I got to figure out what common what common dimensions are for other people's uh, builds. You know, what what is a real common dimension that you use for? plastic pipe for building things like this. Uh, and uh, if, I, if I find out what more common dimensions are, I'll put, uh, put up more versions of the clamp size for different uh, dimensions. Uh, that was a stuttery sentence, wasn't it? So did these improvements um, actually improve the performance of the antenna? Well, yes, absolutely. 
Uh, I did some whisper broadcasting. I had the antenna actually in the RV here, inside, where it usually doesn't perform very well, and I was transmitting only 500 milliwatts, half a watt, on whisper. Let me show you those results. Now remember, this was 500 milliwatts inside the RV, which generally harms the performance of the antenna dramatically. Uh, this is 20 meters, and as you can see, we got out pretty well, all the way up here into Canada, out to Colorado, California, up into Washington. So that's a pretty good footprint for half a watt inside the RV. I keep saying that, I know, but it's you have to understand, when I put an antenna inside of here, this is an aluminum subframe, and it mutes it. So I'm surprised it did as well as it did. Um, what else we got? 30 meters. This was overnight, and our footprint is pretty good again. We got all the way out to the east coast of the U.S. and up into Canada on um, 30 meters. I'm pretty pleased with that. But look at 10 meters. Oh boy. <laughs> again, I got to say it, this was inside the RV, and we got all the way out this was about midday, all the way over to Europe, Denmark, Austria, Germany, the United Kingdom, and somewhere, let me finish that circle, down here, some island probably, off the coast of uh, Africa. So that was 10 meters, half a watt, with the antenna inside the RV. Pretty neat. The other thing I did... <laughs> <laughs> and you can kind of see it back here. Let me show you a close-up. I made a geared down transmission to drive the uh, tuning capacitor on the loop. And uh, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of proud of this. This was my first foray into designing gears in FreeCAD. And I actually designed these gears from scratch using the gears workbench in FreeCAD. And uh, there's a, an extra little feature in here too. I made a clutch. Let me uh, give you a close-up look at the, uh, at the transmission, and I'll talk about that feature. Okay, this is my geared-down tuning for the loop. And you can see, see the capacitor back here rising up and moving? So I've got two sets of herringbone gears, and it's almost a 4 to 1 reduction. It's very, very smooth. Those gears mesh without any backlash at all. It's, it's extremely precise. No, no matter how tiny I move this, that gear is moving. You know, there's no lash. And inside of here, there's a clutch assembly. Here's a breakdown of it on the computer. There's these little nubs and these ridges inside the gear. And when the capacitor hits the end stop, to protect the capacitor from damage and to protect you from breaking the gears if you were really cranking on it and you weren't paying attention or if your capacitor was inside of a box and you couldn't see it and you didn't know when you were going to reach the end if you if you turn too far past the end listen now you can see in there see that black piece that's the the output shaft clutch gear watch that when i hit the end So you can see that black piece is not moving. The gear is moving over it. That's the clutch in action. And it works at both ends of the capacitor's range. If you hit the other end, it releases. So that's my little end stop clutch to protect the capacitor within this assembly. Pretty neat, huh? I'm pretty proud of it. Now, this... Uh, Standoff is kind of universal. Uh, I made a little template so you could mount this on the front of your own magnetic loop build and, and center the capacitor shaft through there, and then you mount the frame and the gears and everything to that. It goes together pretty easy. I made an assembly video. That will be linked to the uh, Thingiverse page where you can download the STLs if you want to make that gear reduction to put on the front of your magnetic loop. Okay, I'm sitting out here with the antenna. I'm on 20 meters, and just so you can see how even with the gear down drive, it is still very, very sensitive on tuning, because they're so narrow. Listen for the static on the radio. So you see how far I'm turning that.
but it's still it is still very much easier <laughs> than when I did not have the gear drive on there. Let's see if we can find somebody to talk to. Hello, Bravo 9 Radio Lima Whiskey. Uh, welcome to the group, and uh, can you hear me? Can I hear you? Go ahead. I can hear you. I can hear you. This is KB9RLW, Kingman, Arizona, five watts into a small magnetic loop. Over. He was in there very light. Kevin, go ahead. Call again. Okay, this is KB9RLW, Kingman, Arizona, five watts into a magnetic loop. Who can hear me? Five seven in Northern California. Very good. QRP called in Nesson Area, Texas, Oregon. Five five, Southwest Oregon. Audio only, Tennessee. Light audio, North Florida. How'd you do, Kevin? Uh, surprisingly good. Got North Florida, Oregon, and California. Thank you, guys. KB9RLW, back to net. All right, thanks for being out there. Okay, Tom. Cool. Yeah, I could kind of sort of hear something, but it wasn't quite sure. And I it works. Up in Kansas. Uh, who's joined us up from the state of Kansas? So there you go. Um, a couple of improvements you can make on your magnetic loop design that might, uh, might well, I wouldn't say improvements generally. It worked in my case. Perhaps it'll work in your case too. Um, bring those SO239 connectors in closer together. Close up the bottom of that loop a bit um, and uh, see the difference on, on your match. And if you can make that coupling loop mobile so you can adjust it, uh, you can get that little extra, that little extra bit uh, out of your antenna and that better match. Hope you found that interesting, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.